So I got these are two and a quarter pounds of clay. The clay is pretty stiff, but I got this beautiful blender clay that I get through Starbucks ceramics down below Seagrove in Central North Carolina. It's a it's a custom blend. It's my recipe that Takara Shibata down there kindly uh, blends for me out of a series of different regional clays. It's really plastic. It's got this lovely Catawba Valley clay in it. Uh, anyway, I've just sent the lump of clay and I'm opening it up, making sure that I don't go too far. That's a perennial issue with all potters, I think. I, you, you can make a very light pot if it's got no base, so you gotta make sure it's decent and solid. And I compress it nicely so that I don't get any of those S cracks. Then I use a, a, a little grip that I know is the claw. I wrap my hands around that open, open ball and claw uh, it up into a, a little cone. And then I follow the claw or every pull with a move I call the bridge. You know, you're just making sure that rim is completely flush. If it's not centered now, you might as well start again. I'll do my first knuckle up pull. And do the bridge again. I actually use a, a trailing, I trail my left hand pinky over the side at the back there that acts as a bridge actually while I'm doing the pulling. I don't know what that piece of flesh in there is called. What's it called, Dom? Do you know? The inner web? I have no idea. The inner web. <laughs> your, your pinky. Okay, then I'm knuckling up again. Nice and steady. I've got my forearm on my right hand braced against the splash pan, which really gives it a little extra stability. Make sure I've got enough water on there. I take a little hunk of clay off the bottom there to allow my knuckle to get in there. I first saw that down at the Hewell's Pottery down in Gillsville, Georgia, where they make strawberry pots. And I'm, I sort of began putting a little bit of shape in on that pool. Again, I'm bridging it at the end. You don't want to drown the pot, but you've got to have enough water in there to let your hand slide in. And I've got my rib now. I'll show it to you after the pull. But I'm just leaning the rib back and uh, push the clay with my left hand against that uh, rigid steel rib. Here it is. Um, I kind of hold it like that. These are ribs that were used up at Cornwall Bridge Pottery and uh, back in the day and Kerry Hewnan has a friend make them for him. So now I'm pushing the clay out to make the belly and, and uh, I was actually telling Dalton the other day when he was making some, what were you making? Mugs? Honey pots. Honey pots, okay. So you're sort of describing it like a tennis ball with your your rib. You're just sort of floating it out wide. This is obviously bigger than a tennis ball, but and they don't have to look like big, uh, you know, balloons. They've got to have some structure to them. Uh, but I put it do a couple of belly pulls, and I actually put this little false foot in down at the bottom, which is something I first saw at Clyde Bowens. And they also do it down at Jugtown and various other southern potteries. And it's a lovely way you can um, end up being able to grip the pitcher while you're glazing and then in use. Now, I've got to wipe the interior out at this point. The, um, if I don't, I've got to be very careful not to get too much water and wipe it all out on just below the belly. That's where I sometimes get some splitting if I forget. And I've done a modest amount of coloring and then I'll start throwing this rim up. Um, and I always leave a little thickness just below the rim just to prevent the rim from warping when I put the handle on it. It also gives it some stability and use so that if you do tap it against something it's less likely to break. Pitches are notorious for you know, you break them on a faucet or something like that. Uh, 
So anyway, I might just put that final curve on it. And I often mark the uh, the neck and the rim with a line right where the handle, the bottom of the handle is going to be right there. And it just gives it a, a, a nice bit of a nice identification. Oh, and I, I mean, all the different body parts are interesting. One of the bits that I, I really like is this, uh, this nape. There's a little place where the belly becomes the neck. And it's a little prolonged curve. It's, um, it's the nape. It's, it's where you'd put a hickey. <laughs> and, uh, and then I wipe my hands off. And the spout goes in. I cut my fingers under the rim. Tickle the, the lip out. And it's done. And wipe my hands and if you've got if you've made it well you can just pick them up and move it over and that's the way you do it i hope you've enjoyed that i have <laughs>